Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. In this series we'll be looking at this Super TriStar 747 120 channel AM FM SSB radio. We'll be having a look what we can do to it whilst trying to keep it as original as possible. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. PCBWay a leading manufacturer of prototyping PCBs. They have many services to choose from, including PCB assembly, CNC machining and 3D printing. Their PCB order process is super simple. Select what you require from the instant quote page and get your quote. Upload your Gerber file and once the order has been approved, which usually takes under an hour, complete the order and your quality PCBs will be on their way to you. The people at PCBWay are super friendly and are more than happy to help you in any way they can. So don't delay, order your PCBs at PCBWay.com today. Please use the link below to support this channel. Thank you. So here's the radio in quite good condition. A bit dusty, but dust wipes off. So let's have a look inside. Case is a bit scratched, but never mind. And on first inspection, everything looks absolutely untouched. Doesn't seem to be any modifications done to this radio at all. Let's have a look at the component side. And this is a thing of beauty. It looks totally untouched. Having a closer look, it's a nice PLL 02AG there. And everything else looks totally standard. Which is a really nice find. So we'll do some frequency tests. We are a little bit low on my meter. It's not too far out. Let's have a look at the power output. Nice healthy at least 15 watts on some of the higher channels. That's looking good. So let's do some more accurate frequency readings. Using my newly acquired frequency counter. And everything looks pretty good. Now I did actually give this a little adjustment. And yeah, we are bang on. So overall, happy with that. Now let's have a look at the bias on the final output. And as you can see by the voltmeter, connected to the base of the final drive, we have 0.5 of a volt. Now this is one of the modifications you can do to correctly bias the final output transistor. So let's try and adjust it first. And full adjustment, 0.63 volts. So yes, we do need to do the bias modification. As it won't adjust up any further. So this modification requires the removal of R44, which you can see. Just to the top left of the pot. 
and we'll replace that with a 15 ohm resistor and that resistor is close enough so we take out our 44 which is a 10 ohm and replace it with our 15 ohm resistor solder that into place and then let's check the voltage again so as you can see we can now bring the voltage down we're using null modulation on SSB for this and there we have bang on 0.7 of a volt. So bias modification done. Now next thing we're going to change a few crystals. So here's our crystal board. And here's our crystals. We've got super high, high and mid band. And we're going to switch these out. And we're going to remove the super high crystal. And we're going to replace it with this 19.880, which should give us low band. So this radio will be low mid high. So after replacing the crystal, let's do some frequency checks. As you can see, low band is quite down. Should be 515, and we're at 512, 513. 965 was good, 415 is good, so the low band is slightly down on frequency, so we need to see if we can adjust that up a little bit. Right on a faster gate on the frequency counter and as you can see it is slightly low so let's try and adjust it by adjusting CT1 on the crystal board and it does come up but max is out at 514 51478 um, so let's just check the other bands as well That's 965 put back into place. And 27415 put back into place. So let's do something with this low band. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace the capacitor next to CT1, change it from a 33 picofarad down to a 22 picofarad. And as you can see that has increased our frequency and allowing us to bring it down with CT1 and put us bang on 26515. Quickly check the other ones, make sure they're not drifted. And we're all good. Now after another little adjustment, we've got them all all nicely leveled out and bang on so I don't think we need to touch those anymore so with our frequency counter connected to TP2 we're now looking at the 10.240 megahertz crystal 
and it's a little bit down but it's within tolerance as per the service manual and we're connected to TP3 and we need to adjust T1 for maximum scope amplitude which was easy enough to do now we're having a look at the 10.695 which is connected to TP5 so we adjust CT4 to get our 10.695 little bit fiddly but we get there in the end Now back onto TP3 again, and we're looking for 21035. Adjusting CT4, this is on the crystal board, which is your LSB offset. And then we adjust CT5 for 10.692. And we get that as well. Again, a little bit fiddly, but eventually we get it. That's close enough with intolerance. Now let's check the VCO voltage. So we're on TP1, and we're looking for 4.2 volts, plus or minus 0.1 of a volt. So we may have to adjust this VCO again once I fit my modification to it. But for now, it's good. We go to channel 1 low band, the VCO is a bit low, so we may have to broadband it. I'm not too sure yet. So that's enough for this video on this Super TriStar 747. So stay tuned for part two, where we're going to do some more modifications and see if we can get our minus 5kc and UK40 working. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.